love for humans is just instinct and reaction. Okay, well, this is an interesting reaction. The conference report says that I am uh, like abusing the word or cheapening it somehow. I believe there's a natural language connotation of consciousness that fits how I'm using it. I mean, I believe if I'm conscious of, you know, something, I know it's there, I'm reacting to it. How do I know that? Um, for someone else is the way in which you react you know it's the whole solipsist argument I mean basically I have my subjective experience only of my own uh, consciousness so when I say something else is conscious like you it's not because I have a subjective experience you know I can imagine that you're experiencing a, subject, a subjective experience because you report it I can imagine my dog is though without him reporting it <coughs> excuse me her uh, because of the way she behaves, she seems to react, she seems to be conscious of her toy and things that she's interacting with. And uh, so I think it makes sense to say that, uh, you know, a plant, a flower that's turning towards the sun all day or the leaves or whatever, you know, that, that it is conscious of the sun because it's reacting to the sun. It's very slow. And it's not with every detail that, you know, another creature has. But, you know, the dog doesn't have the same consciousness of the toy that I have of the toy either. So there's differences. But to me, if you're reacting in that kind of a way, you know, that's different than a mirror that reacts to the sunlight by bouncing the light off. You know what I mean? It does not uh, gather or interact with that as information. Um... So that's thus the lack of knowledge. I mean, if you're talking about something that deals with uh, sensations as information. Furthermore, I mean, we evolved from these kinds of systems, right? So of course they're going to, when I'm just saying it's analogous, and you're going to go, no, it's totally, uns it, and it's not analogous, so there's no, there's no similarity whatsoever. But we evolved from those systems. But you don't, don't you expect maybe to see some similarity? Um... To me, the whole thing of, uh, uh, you know, we know what hormonal kind of emotions, you know, how that affects us, how that affects our body. We know that a, a, a mentally handicapped person, um, you know, doesn't not have emotions. If anything, they've got more emotions. It seems like the intellect, if anything, uh, regulates and uh, lowers the overall emotional intensity. So why if you remove all of that and you have these living things I mean if you didn't have any living things with without uh, neurology I'd understand but we do have all these living things without neurology and what they do share with us that we might be able to get some common attitude about is sort of hormonal things and cold you know hot flashes and 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 probably also smell because you know we smell is basically our chemical detector that's about the most similar uh, one of the more similar um, senses to, to what we observe, you know, uh, amoeba doing. You know, they seem to be conscious of certain chemicals, sugars and things like this, because they react to them in a way that, that shows they know that stuff is there and they go after it. You know, I mean, it's the same as with a human. It's the same kind of behavior. Now, it's harder to imagine the subjective experience, but you're fooling yourself when you imagine my subjective experience. You can't really do that. That's totally impossible. You know, it's similar enough for government work because, you know, you need to breathe air, I need to breathe air. We can all imagine certain things. You know, you love your family, I love my family, or, or don't, or whichever. We can imagine similarities. But um, it's just as unbridgeable a gap as between us and, and plants and other life forms. Now, I can look in there and see genes, and I say, oh, look, they have this kind of genes. Now, yet when people ask about what if somebody's in, you know, knocked out in a coma, well, I'm not saying their brain is conscious at that point. Their, their, their neurology is not conscious. I'm saying the living tissue in their body that is checking to see if there's sugar because it needs sugar, and it's, it's you know, it's 
doing its basically you know these things that are like smell you know this chemical level interaction and those know know there's a sugar there and that it wants a sugar somehow that inform knowing it could just be a computer program or not or whatever but it's just that kind of information exchange when the photon comes in and is taken as information that's distinct from when it's just absorbed as energy you know and and uh you know it may seem weird but there's a lot of weird things going on about information science you know and in quantum theory and that there's something physical about maybe about something being information what some part of of um, material events is information you know and all of that's quite interesting but um, but way more esoteric than we're talking about because we're talking about information as we understand it that you know I know where the Sun is and I want to sunbathe so I face the Sun you know which is what a plant does they, they know where the Sun is and so they face the Sun and, and you think that's a bastardization of language but to me it's the same behavior being described I don't see why we have to have to be so anthropocentric about everything and assume there's these fundamental differences in every every single thing um, and so many people you know and even the the determinists um, want to make this distinction and in that case it's like what there's a determination between us and the other automatons but I don't see that any living things are entirely automatons but then I've tried to write artificial intelligence uh, programs of various sorts and I know how hard it is to make something that seems living uh, at all you know it could fool you a little but you know now another thing is some people were using examples of like my camera collects information is it conscious well does it really because without a, a human to interact with it or some conscious being it's just absorbing photons and everything else plus it wouldn't even be turned on or it had to be pointed you know, to actually gather information it requires being used by a human where it acts as an extension of the human senses and it's your eyes that are collecting the information and using the camera to, you know, as a lens to, to magnify and collect or make permanent and all these aspects of it as an extension of your eyes and ears, which is what it records, you know, sight and sound. So I think uh, when it, as far as when we're talking about information, as having to do with uh, living creatures, it's it's more that this goes in as information and gets utilized. It's the whole cycle of information, you know, uh, and um, and it is a really sublime philosophical topic because you have the same thing. It's like um, if somebody scratches a sign in the side of a of a rock, and uh, you know nobody ever sees it. You know, was it information as it sat there or does it become how does it but to me information is something to do with the cognition it is an information when it's just sitting there it becomes information when it's processed by some sort of uh, living um, contemplator and uh, and if a, and if a plant just thinks about you know water and the sun then that makes it very simple minded but it's still willing and I don't call it a mind only because that is a neurological thing I don't think they have a mind but I can't even say that there's an analog well look you know the, the information about where the Sun is is comes from the leaf right it's warmed a certain way and it can detect that but the point the leaf that's has that inf that is information that has to be given to the stem that information from the leaf has to go as information to the stem so that it can, you know, contract and expand tissues in the stem that are going to rotate that leaf towards the sun. See, to me, that conduit there, that's the fundamental thing. And to make a distinction between humans and plants on that kind of level, when there's a similarity of having to communicate information around your system, which is not something you have in a rock. You know, if the energy moves around the system, um, you know it's not preserved as information um, you know except by luck it might be but it's in the plant and in us it is intentionally designed to preserve this information that puts us on the same side of the most fundamental distinction about being conscious of something in my opinion
some people say rather, you know, they see a, a, a dog, a mother dog caring for its puppies, and they say that's not love, that's just instinct and reaction. Um, but I think it's pretty clear that it, that it is love. Because, you know, love for humans is just instinct and reaction. You know, like with the determinist, anybody that thinks that there's determinism, it doesn't matter if the thing's totally automatic, we're all totally automatic. Now, I don't believe that, but I do believe that we're made out of these emotions and biochemicals and elements that the dog has, and why would you say no? Because if I say no about the dog having that love, why am I saying yes to other people? You're always faced with the solipsist problem, and, and relativistic skepticism is, you know, my approach for, for uh, addressing that. Because in every case, you always have this subjective understanding and an objective understanding, and your subject, which you still have subjectively. But the subjective understanding of something like consciousness is your own personal consciousness. That's different. You can only have that about yourself. So it's different from consciousness. You use the same word for someone else. But that's a different. How do I know other people? have consciousness. Well, because of their behavior. The fact that they report it to me is just one of the behaviors because I can watch the dog and it seems to be conscious, as I said, of its toy and so on and so forth, right? Right. So what about if you have a, a, an insect that, that is tending a, a, a nest of eggs? Why would that not have a, the feeling of love? Is love so sacred to you, only humans? It has to be pure human love? No, the cockroaches, everything has these kinds of feelings, especially something like love, because it's just a way that the, um, it, it's something chemical that is produced primarily. Now, anything neurological, we know that it's a chemical interacting with that neurology, but if we go down beyond that, I would still expect to see that the analogs. Now, when you're a reductionist like myself, yeah, you expect to see the pieces, and we, the, the genes were related to everybody, and it's all chopped up and put together millions and billions of different ways, I expect to see the elements of consciousness out there. But it could be like decomposing a fire. You know, before the fire is lit, you have the wood. It's all the pieces of the fire. What's missing? Just the, the beginning energy of a chain reaction. But it is different than the fire, right? So it could be that the consciousness that I'm talking about that is in plants is like the unlit fire. And you're trying to say, oh, only humans have the fire. Well, or the mammals or whoever you're saying is the special fire has. But the pieces still have to be out there. Now, I think they do have the fire. They just have less information. It's just a very much smaller kind of fire, you know. Um, but then again, it depends, again, what you're thinking about as, as the fire. Now, I don't think they have the subjective experience like us, like I am Piero and I'm going to do this and that. I don't think they have that. I don't think they have consciousness like that, that it could allow a plant to care for its offspring, for example, or even be conscious of them existing. There's no evidence. I don't ever see a plant acting that way. But I do see them acting like they care about water and whatnot. And at conference report used the example of botanists not caring about consciousness, which to me is funny because the people that I know, and we're in Hawaii, lots of people caring for plants, both scientific and otherwise, they treat their plants as though they're living. And in fact, they often do project this plant as sad or something, but it, that might just be projection but it's also, again, what would be so special? You think that if a plant is lacking water, it doesn't have some sort of mechanism that makes the, the system react with something analogous to thirst? Yeah, it's thirsty. It is thirsty, okay? And people talk like that when they take care of plants. So I think, um, I think you're mistaken. I think the more practical thing when you're actually trying to interact with the plant is that you do acknowledge that it's um, living and you do use your understanding of what it means to be living um, to sympathize and empathize with with the plant and uh, and I don't think it's just a coincidence that it works this way or that because we're humans I think it's because it really is living and it really is thirsty it really does want to see the Sun you really do put a vine where it can climb this and that where it can go towards this where it can react and be a living thing so